uh, this is the second part of vestibular operators and uh, it's uh, it's it's an it's it's as interesting as the autolith organs i hope you enjoyed that so in semicircular canals uh, the sensory receptor is not the macula it's in fact the crista ampullaris okay it's the sensory uh, let me just go through the text first it includes the ampullary lumen uh, and it has a, set, a specific gravity the same as endolymph endolymph i did explain is the fluid that runs through the whole system uh, whether it's the vestibular operators or the cochlea inside is uh, is irrigated with this high potassium low sodium fluid called endolymph okay now concentrate on this diagram first please uh, so he welcome back so this is a cut open semicircular canal this is the inner lumen as you can see okay and let me just so this is the cut angle okay this is the lumen inside and here you see right at the let's say this is the origin okay and here somewhere is the utricle i'll show you the overall diagram in a bit but just this is just to orient you this is the utricle this is where the semicircular canal originates and goes goes forwards okay right at the near of the origin you will have the crista ampullaris this is the, this whole thing with the protrusion uh, uh, as uh, named as uh, uh, copula okay so this is the copula and it almost uh, occludes or sort of occludes the whole lumen so when it's wrapped back again you can imagine that this protrusion would you know it just will occlude so if anything were to pass through this lumen it will have to disturb the copula okay so copula is the protrusion the protruding part of the crista ampullaris and here you see the same this this is better shown in this diagram this is the same technology of hair cells these are the hair cells lining the base of the copula and from the base of the hair cells you see the nerve uh, fibers originating these are supporting cells the light pink are the supporting cells okay questions are there any questions <clears throat> look alive guys okay so you understand i'm i'm welcome back so we just uh, covered the structure of the crista ampullaris crista ampullaris as you can see is the sensory organ of semicircular canal the protrusion the protruded part of the uh, uh, crista is called the copula which occludes the lumen of the of the of the of the this whole region here okay um so this 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 structure uh, is completed by the hair cells which line the base of the copula and from the bottom of those hair cells originate the nerve fibers very similar to what you saw in the maculae of the autolith organs okay if this is clear let me now go forwards so as i said that this will occlude the whole thing right now where would the endolymph be endolymph will be bathing this whole area through and through like this it will be flowing either from this di this direction to this direction or from this direction to this direction basically the whole thing is filled with uh, endolymph yes the direction of movement of endolymph is is where the whole uh, detail is in semicircular canals okay so if it were to move from here to here like this it will bend this copula in this direction however if it were to flow from this towards this then it will bend the copula towards this direction okay now by the by now especially for for those students who have been uh, revising their autolith organ as we move along you you know that the bending of this hair cell means everything okay if the bend 
is towards the kynocelium kynocelium being the largest uh, cilia on one side of the head cell okay and all the rest of the cilia are are basically uh, in welcome back so if the cilia were to bend towards the kynocelium this hair cell would be would be here you will now comment and fill this blank if the cilia were to bend towards the kynocelium what will happen to the hair cell come on hurry up okay noor solat raza noor nurus hasnan come on hurry up where are the rest of you stimulated or depolarized good and if the hair cell if the cilia were to do the opposite fall away from the kynocelium this cell would hyperpolarize or it would uh, get inhibited okay i think we've we've covered this let's move on okay so this is the overall orientation this is the overall orientation of the whole thing okay if you remember now this is where a lot of you will see a lot of my hands okay uh because i will now tell you how the whole thing is oriented can you see the slide properly do you remember this diagram yes i can okay yes okay great right so let me just tell you what's in this diagram okay now we are not concerned about this part of the diagram as as i have been saying this is the part of the diagram we are interested in now we have done welcome back i was saying the the reference point is the utricle as far as the semicircular canals go okay you will understand the statement in the following slides if you just concentrate on the utricle this is the utricle right here okay see that all of the semicircular canals and their receptor especially is facing the utricle yes or no so if i were to make it like this oh 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 so something like this and this no nope. and this okay this bit here so the utricle so the utricle if 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 i term it as the reference point you see that all the ampullae all the crista ampullae they are oriented sort of towards the utricle i hope you got that okay chal good so here from here first i will do it on the cursor then i will uh, do it uh, physically i'll just show you with my hands okay now let's start with the horizontal canal this is the horizontal canal by the way this diagram is as 3d as it can get on a slide okay it's a very good diagram so this is the crista ampullaris of the horizontal canal and this is the horizontal canal i'm now rotate rotating my cursor along the horizontal canal as you can see it is horizontal okay and let's say this is your horizontal canal done okay now let's do the anterior canal so this welcome back i was doing the anterior canal anterior it's also called the superior canal because it's placed superiorly okay this is the anterior or slash superior canal okay is this okay so 
हॉरिजोंटल और लैटरल ओके एंटीरियर और सुपीरियर डन नाउ द पोस्टीरियर इज ट्रिकी बिकॉज ऑब्वियसली यू आर लुकिंग एट द फ्रंट ऑफ दिस डायग्राम सो द पोस्टीरियर if it's if it were a 3d model then it would be very simple you can um so let's hold that question hold that question so look at the posterior now i'll start from its crystal ampullaris this is the crystal ampullaris of the posterior canal and look at how it sort of arches in the background background being the key word here it arches in the background in the background of the horizontal canal loops back and completes okay yes now are there any immediate questions solid question is can we say that the anterior canal this one here can it can we say that's vertical yes but we also need to then say that the posterior is vertical as well i'll show you how and why if there are no immediate questions let me now show you a uh, more sort of physically okay so this this would be the horizontal canal okay this like this this is the horizontal canal yes this would be the anterior superior canal this and this would be the posterior also vertical welcome back i'll do it again horizontal anterior posterior yes i couldn't see the image of the hands it, i i hope it was clear theek hai looks like only a couple of students are studying and the rest are allah knows where are they let me hear from you come on rest there there are measly 39 on the on the card let me have it all nine okay but it it would be nice if you could just say something sensible once in a while okay so that i know that i'm talking to a collection of people and not just couple of students all right now i'll 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 say a statement now and i want you to tell me if you understand that all of these semicircular canals are at right angle to each other all of these semicircular canals are at right angle to each other how many of you can visualize that right great okay now now i want you to look at my hand because i i i want to tell you something else this is a bit more um visual let me say okay now you are you are standing behind my head okay so and my head the whole head is tilted 30 degrees forwards welcome back if the head is tilted 30 degrees forwards in this position the anterior superior canal will be oriented like this do you copy it was like this right but it tilted the head 30 degrees forwards so it's like this now yes 
sort of like this okay so with the head tilted 30 degrees this is the anterior this is the posterior while this i have just folded the posterior to show you the horizontal okay they are all beautifully at right angle to each other yes i have just tilted the head to show you that the anterior at right angle to the posterior but look at the planes my head my hand is like this it's like this okay anterior posterior horizontal yes okay great now let's move forwards okay now this is one step ahead so semicircular canals on one side are matched with corresponding coplanar semicircular canals on the other side we will we will we will cover this don't worry so two horizontal canals on both sides are in one plane so these are the two semicircular canals one on this side one on this side they are on the same plane so from the left and the right welcome back so the two horizontal canals are in one plane is this okay this is done this is the simple bit yes I'm waiting for a couple of messages to show that you have heard this and it's okay. So I proceed. Good. Now, anterior of, let's say, the right side, the left side here, will be in the same plane as the posterior of the right side. I hope you can see my fingers. Let me just push it back. So these are the two sides. This is the two semicircular canals, okay? I'm showing you the anterior, anterior canal now of the left side. It's right here, okay? And the, this is the left anterior canal with the head uh, bent 30 degrees forwards. It's in this direction, okay? And the posterior one is right here. It's right here. This is the right posterior canal. Okay. Like this. Like this. So the anterior of one side is in the same plane as the posterior of the other. Yes. It's, it's, it's rather difficult to show here on 2D. But do you get the gist of it? Imagine the three semicircular canals on the left side and on the right side. Okay. Now what is being said, horizontal, it's okay. I'm repeating, Saurat. Did you get the horizontal one? Horizontal is the... Welcome back. As I was saying, the two right and left horizontal canals are in the same plane. Okay. You got that. Now, I'll say it in, in a sentence and then ask you to visualize the anterior of the left side which was at right angle to its own posterior canal so this is the anterior of the left comes back and this is the posterior of the this is the posterior angle posterior anterior anterior posterior so I'm saying that anterior of the left side 
is in the direct plane of the posterior of the opposite side. Now you should get it. On the right, it will be similar. Anterior, posterior. Anterior, posterior. So, something like this. Okay, this is the anterior, this is the left side, this is the right side. This is the anterior of the left side, this is the posterior of the right side. So th both of these are in the same plane and both of these are in the same plane. Oops, sorry. Okay, did you get that? Sorry, I made it on, the, on a side. So this is the left side, this is the right side, this is the anterior on the left, posterior on the left and similarly right anterior and right posterior. Now this anterior on the left and the posterior of the right are in the same plane. Okay, And similarly this here is in the same plane. Got it? Yes? Okay, great. Uh, again, I only am hearing this from a very few students out of half of the class. Uh, doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence that uh, this concept is very clear to you. But again, since time is passing, I have to move on. Okay. Now, why is this whole complication here in this case? Welcome back. As I was saying, we never said any matching of the right and left autolith organs. However, with this, with semicircular canals, we need to match the right to the left. Any idea why? Anybody? Anybody else? No. Sorry. No. No. This can't be the answer to everything in vestibular operators. Uh, no, Noor. Flow of under lymph obviously is required for it to sense anything. But why do we need to consider them in this situation? in this axis, the, the plane, the plane thing that I mentioned, this coplanar thing that is mentioned, why is it in semicircular canals and not in autolith? Because, Shabash Raza, Shabash Mushtaq, well done. Where are you guys? Uh, 59 and 007 semicircular canal is uh, involved in s detecting circular motion, rotation, yes. So rotation, so for example, if this is the orientation here, okay, the head spins in this direction, in this direction, or rotates in this direction, okay, then the rotation will be picked up in this entire plane. And if it were to rotate in this direction, it will be picked up by this plane. And everything in between will be picked up as well. So you have a literally a 360 degree curve and of course you have the horizontal canals here. Let me just make them as well. So this is covered as well. Right? So you have a 360 degree coverage of all the possible rotations that your head can go into or full body can go into for that matter. Yeah? Done. I hope I can wipe this off. Ah, thank God. Good, I can wipe it off. Okay. So we move forwards. <clears throat> now the examples are interesting. When you say no by nodding, 
you basically stimulate the horizontal canals so when you rotate uh, when you rotate the head in a no so this is the head you are rotating it no no i don't want it i don't want to hear this lecture i want to go to sleep so this is ac 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 across the horizontal axis here and here here and here okay what about yes yes would be like this isn't it yes yes sir i know nothing <laughs> okay yes it is along the hor uh, anterior territory anterior mainly anterior and its corresponding posterior territory the anterior will be stim will will do this but uh, let me just say it the anterior will be stimulated when the head would rotate in the anterior direction so yes when you say yes it rotates in the forward direction that is the anterior the anterior canal picks it up okay and the posterior is when the head rotates towards the shoulder okay so this is this was the remember this was the posterior canal the anterior was here the posterior was right here like this okay so anything in the background okay is towards the shoulder any movement towards the shoulder is picked up by posterior canals okay so slightly more complex maneuvers would, uh, are written next to the simple ones spinning along the long axis of the body so you this is if this is the whole you this is the whole you you are spinning like this like this rotating like this okay this is picked up by horizontal canals a somersault you know what a somersault is you rotate the whole body is rotated like this in one direction that is picked up by the anterior and performing a cartwheel is picked up by the posterior canal you can look up, look this up on youtube and uh, welcome back it's a very somber class today not much talking going on what about spinning the head to the extent it is possible what about spinning the i don't get it mushtaq oh, i don't understand the question in which direction in semicircular canals it's about the direction you can spin wherever you want to whatever extent you want it's the direction that we are talking about semicircular canals will tell the cns that this is the direction that the chap is rotating his head in okay mushtaq yes yes if anything which uh, is say in the middle here axis somewhere or more towards the horizontal less towards the anterior which will be picked up more by the horizontal less by the anterior good what else any other questions let me tell you something cool up now if this is not cool enough let me add to the coolness come on any questions no questions okay i'll proceed i think there might not be any questions and there might be some problem with the chat feature okay now now say if there is rotation body rotation in the direction in the forward direction which lies in the territory of the uh welcome back so as i was saying let's say the rotation is happening like this in the territory of the left anterior canal done so it's reasonable to say that the left anterior semicircular canal will be stimulated yes 
but what will happen to the coplanar posterior right semicircular canal ideas so i have stimulated this this plus main stimulated the cns the cns will be apprised brain stem will be apprised that there is motion alongside the area of the left semicircular canal okay yes however my question is what will happen to its body this anybody do you think it will stimulate do you think it should stimulate or it should be inhibited raza says it should be inhibited anybody else solar says it's now this is interesting let's have a vote <laughs> if voting solves anything that is okay noor says inhibited how about the rest 52 now on the counter come on what will happen to the opposite coplanar body of the anterior noor hasnan says stimulated subhan says inhibited question mark so it's not samiullah says inhibited okay now i'll say a statement and inshallah this will clear out say if you are sitting in the brain stem and the rotation happened in this area right here all along this what would a, a obvious rhetoric question would, welcome back so you're sitting in the brain stem you would like to be apprised of the rotation right you would like to know whether the body rotated along the left anterior semicircular canal or not the 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 semicircular canal on the left side is stimulated so the vestibular nerve fibers originating from this particular canal will tell you in the brain stem that yes sir the rotation has happened in this direction however mark these words the cns does this a lot you will hear this a lot in sensory physiology in special senses and today you are hearing it in the motor section of cns contrast signal contrast so to enhance this signal contrast to really because you are sitting somewhere else you are not sitting inside the semicircular canal this is not where the decision will be made this is just the the staging post this is just the signal originator and this has said that okay there is rotation here you are sitting here this is the brain stem to enhance to increase this this signal what do you need you need a contrast you need a contrast of this stimulation so let's inhibit it inhibit this when you inhibit so in a so let's say this whole line is represented in the brain stem like this literally let's say the line the whole line is represented in the brain stem this whole plane is represented so the planes the 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 this portion of the plane lit up when the rotation happened in this direction however this part of the plane the, the map or the plane whatever in the brain stem got inhibited this inhibition further amplified the lit up portion of the map wouldn't it rather than it also mildly got stimulated or whatever or if it it were, was not there at all as compared to this scenario we have a welcome back while the other part is bright and it becomes brighter when you compare it with the dark part the inhibited part i hope this is clear this contrasting it will help you this concept in sensory physiology and when you uh, read i when you read i uh, the way cns uses this phenomena this contrast phenomena to 
uh, your eye your eyes right now are doing it by the way when you focus on my finger here if you focus on my finger here right now here this this bit here my index finger right what your cns is doing is it's blurring the rest of it it's inhibiting the rest of the field and only t showing you the tip of the finger very clearly so even right now you are using this on off contrasting mechanism remember to thank me when you read that in the eye physiology send a prayer yes subhan very well very good man you are yes kind of like lateral inhibition to amplify the main hero of the of the scene good subhan good okay with this with this we come to end end and end of this particular slide let's move on okay let me just if you're not bothered let me just keep it here okay just for a rainy day right and let's focus on this now can you see the slide can you see the print and the slide you can you should see it now clearly okay here we go now we now we we we've done all that uh, spelling is not right trans should be an s here sorry about this so now we need to understand how does the semicircular canal get activated we talked about the anterior one get, getting activated and importantly the posterior of the opposite side getting inhibited right now we need to know how does this stimulation and in inhibition uh, come about well you know the basic technology right you know that somehow some hair cell here somewhere will the cilia on top of it will fall towards the cilia and that segment of the semicircular canal will get in, uh, excited or stimulated while the opposite would happen on the opposite side yes you kind of understand that because we've done this in the autolith the si similarly it, it it happens here cilia falling on on or towards the kinocilium uh, the hair cell gets stimulated the opposite thing inhibits it this is the basic tech behind this diagram however this is a slightly more complex because on top of that technology we also see this if you see this these are arrows and the arrows are going towards the utricle these arrows are going towards the utricle can you see it yes now these are the cilia the cilia in the uh, by the way this is these are horizontal canals just he has just shown you one so that we can explain it uh, uh, right has a horizontal canal the left horizontal canal origin crystal ampullaris the rest of it done so what he has said what he's saying is the hair cells with their cilia they are oriented towards the utricle and what do i mean by that so the kinocilium oops facing the utricle on this side it will be like this on this side it will be like this so all the kinocilia they are facing the utricle yes or no no not near they are facing it they are arranged such that all the kinocilia cilia are placed facing the utricle yeah
गुड ओके सो इन द हॉरिजोंटल कनाल दिस इज द रूल सीलिया और ओरिएंटेड टू वर्ड्स द यूट्रिकल हाउ एवर इन द अदर टू एंटीरियर एंड पोस्टीरियर दे आर ओरिएंटेड अवे फ्रॉम द यूट्रिकल जस्ट एन एनाटोमिकल डिटेल दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर गॉर इट बाय द वे all of these can be in some yum little mcq sitting on top of your head next wednesday it looks very nice and easy peasy right now but let me ask you next wednesday okay chalo manur what's with the 43 okay doesn't matter right now are you ready for some action right noor obviously came late to the party now let me just keep this okay now bete this is not the time solat this is not the time you know why i did not keep it on a thursday guys you know why because i know your psyche If I keep it on a Thursday, the Wednesday lecture will go to hell. <laughs> am I right or am I right? Yeah. Hello. Welcome back. This is the same diagram, the two horizontal semicircular canals, but now it's I've shown you the complete. I'm showing you the complete diagram. Okay, the origin of the nerve. The origin of the nerve. okay and now we will concentrate on the rotation now remember semicircular canals it's all about rotation uh and the direction of rotation is crucial for you for your understanding okay so i'll go slow let's say that the guy rotated his head abdullah we will come to your house all of us and and stamp on that anarchist okay right so the this is up in the head inside the head you have the two horizontal canals okay and the guy starts to rotate his head in this direction in this direction or like this if this was the head this 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 is the rotation of the head got it yeah look alive guys come on it's time to shine it's time to put all of that knowledge now to a practical scenario yes i need some more yes now what about okay i mean there wasn't much to understand here <laughs> but i want to uh, want to know everybody is here cool why the ha huh. so let i'm coming to that point that is my question actually so if the head is can i see it here yeah if the head is rotating in this direction this direction the endo lymph within the semicircular canals will oppose this movement and will rotate in the opposite direction don't worry i'll explain but at the moment i have just told you what actually happens shabash was inertia well done but i'll explain it anyway okay welcome back the movement inside the semicircular canals the movement of the endo lymph inside the semicircular canals opposes the rotation of the head and the answer is due to its inertia because obviously it's, it's not a very thin fluid it's 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 slightly heavier than water not as thick as the stratoconia okay so would it respond to uh, changes in gravity question question no and this is a big question people this is for sure abdullah 
I don't know what you have been uh, inhaling this morning, but this is all for sure. Okay, they've run experiments. Okay, now, so very, in, very important point to note at this point is that semicircular canals, no effect on gravity, no effect of gravity on semicircular canals. Crista ampullaris does not, is not a big fan of gravity. What is it a big fan of? the flowing of the endolymph because it occludes the whole thing so when the thing flows the fluid flows through it it pushes it either pushes it from this direction or pushes it from this direction yes this is a very important point about gravity autolith organs very dependent on gravity semicircular canals not not so much or not at all right Semicircular canals are dependent on the movement of endolymph which is based on the rotation of the body or the head. Got it? Okay, now, if you understood that, and if you understand that rotation in this direction will cause the fluid to move in this direction, so on the left, welcome back, so on the left side, where the rotation was happening, let's see what's happening here, the fluid will oppose the movement, right, when it opposes the movement, it will push the hair cells towards the kinocelia which were oriented towards the utricle or may I say that the fluid pushes the hair cells in, in the direction of the utricle it's the same thing really so if the hair cells are pushed towards the kinocelia i.e. towards the utricle this whole thing lets up it, it, it stimulates, it gets stimulated and the nerve which is originating here also increases its firing right here. This is the monitor of the action potential per second that are being generated. Yes? Questions about the semicircular canal which is on the side of the rotation. Any questions? Yes, 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 Mushtaq. Remember I mentioned it in this scenario here in the previous slide. So the movement was in the direction of the anterior. So this, this lit up while this got inhibited. This is just different in the only way that, I mean in the only sense that here he has shown the horizontal canals. The same technology happens here too. So the direction, uh, the, the semicircular canal which is placed in the direction of rotation gets stimulated. We have just understood how does this happen and on the opposite side the movement of the fluid will be away from this welcome back Moaz I hold that question I'll, I'll explain in a bit first tell me do you guys understand what happens on the side on, on this side of the semicircular canal i.e. the semicircular canal which is on the rotation valley side and the one which is opposite the rotation side Okay, okay. This is more important by the way. Do you understand this? This gets stimulated. This gets inhibited. Stimulated. Inhibited. Contrast is very, very clear. So, imagine a place where this signal is going as a signal on a map. Clearly, the rotation happened on the left side. Yes?
Yes? Okay. Now, we are done on this slide. So let me just respond to or repeat my point about gravity. You remember autolith organs due to statoconia, the specific gravity of autolith organs is way, way higher than the bathing endolymph around the autolith organs. So they are, <clears throat> they are yes, they get affected by the flowing endolymph over them, the autolith organs, but they are quite more sensitive by the statoconia, the calcium carbonate crystals in the statoconia, which lies, which, which is that thick paste lying on top of the hair cells. So the effect of gravity, <clears throat> so the effect of gravity on the autolith is, is profound. However, welcome back, endolymph has very low specific gravity. So gravity doesn't really affect it much. This was the point. Okay, Moaz and Abdullah, you got it? Cool. No worries. So this is just uh, <clears throat> detailed. Just have a read of it. Uh, when the head starts to begin, which is the start of acceleration, uh, the whole setup gets increased, uh, stimulated. The What I've just explained, the relevant side uh, towards the rotation will get stimulated. The opposing side will get inhibited. When the rotation steadies, there is no acceleration. So when the head, you start rotating the head at the start, the semicircular canal get stimulated. When you are rotating it at a steady rate, there will be nothing going on because the, the fluid uh, will come back uh, uh, to be stationary when the uh, rotation steadies. However, right at the end of the rotation, when you are about to start, you st start to stop uh, the rotation, there is deceleration and again the whole thing uh, reverses the whole events mentioned in point number one, they reverse and there is movement of the endolymph, the endolymph will uh, simulate the opposing circulate, uh, semicircular canal and inhibit the, the first one that it stimulated. So just reverse order happens and that's that. This is just a slow motion replay of what we have discussed. Okay. And of course, this, this adds one, one tiny more concept on top of whatever we've discussed uh, in the sense that when the thing begins, uh, semicircular canal gets activated. When it's the motion steadies, uh, there is no stimulation or inhibition. But at the same time, at the end, when there is deceleration, you have the opposite of uh, the sequence in, mentioned in point number one. Okay, It's, it's very similar to what you st uh, studied in muscle spindle, autolith, and again in this. These, these, uh, these receptors, they respond to the rate of change. Come back. When the change is steady, they don't detect anything. Uh, better repeat that question, Abdullah. It, it vanished by the time I got to read, read it. Just, just repost it, please. Abdullah. Okay, I think Abdullah has gone off the grid. Okay, so we we proceed. Um, there is this little cool thing called predictive function of the semicircular canals. You will uh, we will do this in cerebellum as well. Uh, this is to just say that semicircular canals together with cerebellum have predicted predict predictive ability. What do we mean? We, we mean that when we are performing very fast movements, so very, uh, so running for example, while we are running, 
uh, there is a lot of muscle contractions going on in the lower limbs uh, and the upper upper torso is kept const uh, is kept stable right so the to and fro motion of the lower limbs in running is very fast the muscle contractions of the agonist and the antagonist now during that time there is no there is uh, uh, not enough time uh, i'll be able to explain this better at in cerebellum but suffice to say that since the movement is very quick since the movement is very quick semicircular canals uh, uh, and the cns they don't have time they don't have time to receive sensory information from the legs and adjust the motor signal or adjust the balance mark these words now adjust the balance that is required for the following movements to come they haven't come yet but in the few seconds ensuing right now whatever the movement will happen in the next 2 3 seconds what semicircular canal does is predict somehow predict those <clears throat> movements <clears throat> welcome back i'll give you an example and this will clear out so you're running in 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 one direction okay and now you start to curve so you were running in this direction can you see this okay and and at this point here you decided to take a left bend while you're running so now this is the motion of running got it this is the point where predictive function will come into play right about here right about here where you were running straight and then you decided let me just take a turn while running this is a very difficult thing for the cns to maneuver why because you will just do it you just need you want to do it in one smooth motion this is the problem okay you won't run to this point then stop turn and then start running no you will you have you want to run through this curb through this corner this is a difficult proposition so as soon as you hit this point here this point here and you are now bending slightly towards the left the the difference in pressure on the lower legs and the and the and the pelvis slightly tilting will signal quickly to the semicircular canals and the cerebellum that the chap wants to bend while running towards the left and through predictive function it will sort of calculate that you want to turn the whole body in the following 2 3 seconds towards the left and it adjusts the i hope all of this is being recorded the down coming motor signals it adjusts such that you don't fall while you are going through the curve while you haven't gone to the curve as yet ah uh, you got that yes i mean it's not a huge subject here but you get the gist right so with this i'll take a break the break won't be long it will be hardly 5 6 minutes the break is only for your benefit so that you can recuperate uh the concepts uh, that we have just discussed we will look at uh, some clinical scenario after we return so please uh this lecture will be auto uploaded let me let me say let, let's reconvene in 10 minutes so that you can at least go through the video uh, which will be available immediately after i switch it off okay uh, plus uh, do do revise it so that when we come back we will be studying nystagmus followed up by an introduction to cerebellum okay chalo